My name is Nikki Gleed and I'm an associate first violin with the LMP. I've been asked to discuss what it's like to be conducted from a player's point of view. Every piece of music can be interpreted in so many different ways. When a conductor stands in front of a group of musicians, they serve as a messenger for the composer. I feel like it is their responsibility to understand the music and convey it through gestures so transparently that the orchestra can understand it perfectly. We the musicians can then transmit a unified vision of the music to the audience. I find it hugely inspiring to work with a conductor who has a clear vision for a piece of music. When the same repertoire comes up and again and again, I can be guilty of thinking, yes, great, I know this. And in my head, I have an idea of exactly how it's going to feel based on the last performance. But then in a rehearsal, a conductor can take a much different tempo or a slower tempo, for example, in the second movement of Mozart's Jupiter Symphony. It might take a couple of goes to find the tempo, but if the conductor is passionate and convincing, then it is a lot easier to play the music in a different way. For me, the technique of a conductor is important, but I only really notice it if it gets in the way of the music. I remember once playing Tchaikovsky's Souvenir de Florence as a student, with a conductor jumping up and down, making circles with his arms, indicating for us to keep the phrase going as long as possible. The energy was incredible, and we found our best playing at the time. And it made me feel like I could just give everything, because the conductor was too. We rely on the conductor not only to set the tempo, but to allow us to prepare the sound. The conductor has to anticipate the gesture of movement before the sound is played to provide clarity, especially for those members of the orchestra positioned further away. Likewise, beating ahead gives the orchestra a chance to follow the intentions of a conductor with some warning. I definitely feel like it is a trust game. When a conductor stands in front of a group of musicians, a decision is made in a matter of seconds of just how much trust to place into their hands. It must be absolutely terrifying to be a conductor. We also rely on a conductor to balance the volume to bring out different voices in the texture as we play the music and to shape the sound of the ensemble. Different size ensembles have different needs for a conductor. Since the mid 19th century, conductors have led an ensemble from the front. But before that, directing with an instrument was the most common practice. In, in smaller ensembles, we often get an opportunity to have our opinions heard and the creative input is shared between more voices. I spend a lot of time working in symphony sized orchestras, so it is so refreshing to hear more than one creative input. This is often the case in LMP. When the concerts are directed by a leader, it gives us an opportunity to express ourselves more freely. It's great when a conductor just lets musicians play for the majority of the time. It feels far more productive as we can correct so much ourselves. Some instruments have less music written for them than others and may just have waited 30 minutes to play their only note to find the conductor has stopped the bar before they come in and to go back to the beginning again. Frustrations like this can easily build up and noise levels rise that can disturb the focus of the rehearsal and sometimes create a tense atmosphere. It feels like a great way to begin a rehearsal is by thanking the orchestra for the performance the night before or just any kind of acknowledgement really. We all shuffle our feet to show our appreciation and it's a great united place to then start playing again. 
I, like most musicians, have several different music projects going on at one time. So using a conductor lets me trust that there is a plan to prepare and perform a concert already in place. This gives me more confidence to do my job more effectively when often there is a time restraint. The pressure is huge sometimes, often arriving home from a concert very late and not having enough time or hours in a day to prepare calmly. I am constantly adapting to the size of the orchestra, the style of the music and the pace of a project. In opera orchestras, the project can go on for months, a complete contrast to three hours rehearsal and then a concert performance. The pace is slower because of the sheer scale of putting together such huge forces and the duration of some operas too. I am blown away by Wagner's ring cycle, but I must admit the reality of playing Gotterdammerung is that not only will I be utterly exhausted, but I will have had to have worn my earplugs to protect my hearing, often during the best bits. Playing in a pit can be very tricky as the sound is often distorted because of the shape of the pit. We are squashed together more than on a typical concert platform into a rectangular shape and it feels impossible sometimes to hear far left to far right. We have to rely on the conductor to place us, us, us together and not our ears. In ballet, the role of a conductor is different again Often the speed and interpretation of the music is determined by the movement of the ballet dancers. From the pit, I can't often see the ballet dancers on stage. And so again, it's left down to the conductor, which is such a shame sometimes to feel cut off, especially when you can see and hear the audience going wild with applause for the dancers on stage. When well-known pieces of music are choreographed for a performance, we may have to to play them at a completely different tempo to what they were written for. I remember particularly Mendelssohn's Midsummer Night Dream overture, which was so slow, it was a real challenge to get my bow off the string to keep the stroke short. Whichever size ensemble I'm lucky enough to work with, I want the freedom to be able to play my best. In my opinion, the best conductors have a convincing vision for a piece of music, are sensitive, have tact, humour and just let us play. A friend of the LMP has always wondered how on earth you keep an eye on the conductor when you are reading complicated music at the same time. The simple answer is peripheral vision. I can position myself to be able to see the music and the conductor at the same time out of the corner of my eye. I also use peripheral vision to see my colleagues whilst playing, which obviously helps us work more effectively. And I find the more you know a piece of music, the more you get to look up and pull faces at your colleagues. Why do the LMP play without a conductor, but sometimes play with one? The LMP is a truly self-run chamber orchestra from decision-making, choosing repertoire and conductors or soloist directors to collaborate with. It is always exciting to work with other inspiring musicians and sometimes we need a conductor for concerts with larger ensembles for practical reasons. I love the variety of this in LMP. We get to enjoy the opportunity to express ourselves without a conductor as well as the chance to work with other great musicians too. <laughs>